talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa, cindyschulte.com, and Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Julie Nelson. And I'm Chris Magruder. So you know our voices here. Chris, <laughs> you look so pretty in your blue color today. And oh, today we're you. talking about Mary. So you wore her color. So it's wonderful. Inadvertently. So she must have been in, in my subconscious yes, helping me. Yes, <laughs> she is helping you. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Our guest today is Carrie Grass. We had scheduled her a couple weeks ago in the for the month of May. But I was six. We had to postpone her. But she has a great book out called The Marian Option. And she's going to be coming on and sharing us with that, a little things from that. It's really interesting how um, the Blessed Mother has been a solution to so many things in our civilization across centuries when in crisis. And uh, I, I, she's been very geopolitical. You don't think of uh, the Blessed Mother as being geopolitical, but she has in her godly way. So mm-hmm. um, Carrie's going to share a little bit about that. She kind of said to us, it's like a biography of Mary, which I thought that was a nice summary of the book and what she was going to talk about yes. today to us. And, you know, she's going to help us to really look at how she can help us draw yes. closer to Christ and those we love. So stay tuned because yes. she's got some answers maybe for you. And she is just so down to earth. She has a PhD, but you, she's just so down to earth. She's just like any one of us you could just gather around the coffee table and have a conversation with. So yes, she's a very yes, gifted yes, lady. She is. And you know what? While you're out there listening, listeners, prepare yourselves to get your cell phones out and text us to 515 515- Two two three eleven fifty. You know our call numbers two two three eleven fifty, because we want you to tell us when uh, you had maybe a, a wonderful uh, answer to prayer or maybe a little miracle that came um, when you were praying the rosary. Absolutely, because we know we we hear them from you. We've had our own, so we know they're there. So share that with us, please. We'd yeah. love to. We want to hear from you. We yeah. want to talk to you. Text us. We, we've got a couple texts coming in from friends we told we were going to talk about this, you know, and so they're telling yeah. us, you know, yeah. a few of their things. So, yeah, we want to hear yours. Join we us at yours. the table here. That's it's, right. It's lonely. That's it's lonely right. here. Oh, but we're dancing. We were already dancing. We dance. Listeners. We, and, we, <laughs> and speaking the table, you know, we had the wonderful opportunity. We were invited to the St. Francis Wings group last uh, Tuesday evening to speak to those ladies. And uh, it was delightful. It's always fun to meet people. And, and they got talk to see how we do kind of our chair yeah, dance before we, the show starts. We do. We, sh- <laughs> we shared with them what comes on behind the scenes, yes. so to speak. And uh, we certainly enjoyed visiting with all, all you ladies out there. And if you're listening, we talked to you about our text line. So you please text us today at 515-223-1150. And I'm going to just do a little shout out to Rita because I told Rita, so I'm going to give you a little shout out because she's the first one who told me. Hi, Rosa Rita. Rita. Oh, hi, Rita. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun night. Definitely fun. Yes, and and speaking of that, if you're looking for a speaker for your group or anything, we'd love to come and talk to you and share what goes on. It's People really like enjoying what goes on behind the scenes and how we got into all this. Well, we think they do. Well, they were smiling, so <laughs> they were smiling, yeah, yeah. so... And I think also they enjoyed hearing about different show guests because some of them hadn't heard of them. They were taking notes, too, oh, yeah. like yeah, different things. Yeah, some of the books that, that we've talked about yeah. on our show and the different people. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Should we start with prayer? Let's do that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, real briefly, we have a feast day coming up that's Marian. It's the feast day of the sacred. We just had the feast day of the sacred heart of Jesus on Sunday. So now following that is the feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which is also kind of lesser known, I think, a little bit. But since we're talking about Mary and the feast day is this June this Saturday, June 9th, I think we need to give it a little bit of a background here to how that came to be. Well, the Immaculate Heart of Mary was first celebrated in 1648. I yes. was surprised I didn't know that. But um, it, it didn't gain a lot of popularity until several several centuries later. In 1839, our Blessed Mother, when she appeared to St. Catherine of Labrae and gave the image of the Miraculous Medal, that, that featured both hearts, Jesus and Mary's. And then in Fatima in 1917, Mary told Lucia 
that she was to remain on earth and help promote the devotion to the Immaculate Heart. So it started way back then. Right. And it is, it's, common th- it's common in our church that something will start and it will take centuries for it to develop yes. and to become yes. a full devotion. God so is patient. God is patient <laughs> with us. And we need, we're need we slow learners sometimes. Uh-huh. We just need to kind of take it in slowly. Yes. But I think one thing that to say before we we bring Carrie on is to explain the difference between the devotion to the hearts of Jesus and Mary. Yes. Because I've always wondered about that too. What is the the difference? difference? Yeah. So with Jesus, Jesus emphasized his divine heart as being full of love for mankind. But with this love for the most part being ignored or rejected, while devotion to Mary's heart is essentially concerned with the love that her heart has for Jesus, for God, Mm -hmm. and therefore it is not an end in itself. So the love of her heart is meant to be a model for the way we should love God. Right. So I think that's beautiful. And the fact her heart is immaculate, that is sinless, means that she's the only fully human person who is able to really love God in the way he should be. Yeah, and she then helps us cooperate with his redemptive suffering. Yes, I think it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's so beautiful. beautiful. And with this, we got from CatholicMom.com, by the way, this Mm -hmm. information. So So you're loving her. And thereby loving, really, her son, Jesus. She brings you closer yeah. to her son. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. kind of like when somebody loves one of our kids. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, That's a good analogy. Yes. All right. Well, let's bring on the show today our guest. Well, you know what? We do need to say thank you That's to Cindy right. Schulte. So let's say thank you. <laughs> yes, please go ahead. Thank you, Cindy thank Schulte you. of Farm Bureau Financial Services for underwriting Catholic Women Now. She is an authorized independent agent. She and her team provide health insurance options from Wellmark Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa. And she makes insurance really simple for you. So if you need somebody to help you with that, and there's so many people out there right now who are confused by it, let her help you through any of those stages in your life. CindySchulte.com or 515-226-2111. Now, Dr. Carrie Gress, tell All us about right. her. Tell Carrie us about her, Julie. Gress has a doctorate in philosophy from the Catholic University of America, and she is a faculty member at Pontifex University. Her work has appeared in many numerous journal, journals, um, including Alatia, Catholic Vote. She's been on Relevant Radio, EWTN. She has worked professionally in Washington, D.C., in Rome, and she has been... Her work has been translated in seven languages. So she is the author of several books, Nudging Conversions, um, Ultimate Makeover, and today, and oh, one with George Weigel, she co-authored The City of Saints, A Pilgrim's Guide to John Paul II's Krakow. She's a mother of four, and she and her family live in Virginia, and she's here today to talk about her newest book, The Marrying Option, God's Solution to a Civilization in Crisis. Thank you, Carrie, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's always an honor to join you, ladies. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for being patient that we had to reschedule you. And yeah, we, oh, are, we no understand. Problem. A lot of um, people have been hearing you. You were with John, we hear as well, yesterday. So we, I was. We're yeah. enjoying having you at Iowa Catholic Radio. Yeah, you're becoming I mean, a regular I here. <laughs> visit your state in this virtual kind of way. Yeah, so that's yeah, great. yeah. Well, as a world that's often on the brink of disaster, it feels like God always seems to send his help through Mary. And um, I'm sure that, where, what led you to writing about the Marian option? Yeah, well, this book was um, definitely inspired first off by um, the, the, another book called The Benedict Option, which uh, came out and kind of captured everybody's attention. It was a bestseller. It was um, written by a man named Ron Dreyer, who is a journalist. And he, he was basically start off with a series of articles talking about what the Benedict Option is and how, um, you know, we're living in a stage where we kind of need to hunker down and um, start really living a local community, a thriving local community. And so um, I was really intrigued by the idea, like, what are what is it that he's doing? What's he promoting and whatnot? So anyway, I ended up kind of working through what he was talking about. And, um, you know, as much as I love St. Benedict, there's um, some real gaps. Um, that are not really applicable to our period of time, that, that we just can't model ourselves after St. Benedict moving to a monastery to the hills and um, shutting ourselves off from, from the rest of civilization. And um, so I, I kept seeing all the things that Dreyer was concerned about, and every, for every one of them, I was just struck. Like, okay, if you want to deal with evangelization, who's dealt with is better? Our Lady. If you want to deal with heresies or um, Islam, who's dealt with it? Our Lady. And so all of these issues, you know, the whole laundry list of things that we have to deal with today, um, our ladies dealt with already throughout history. And so that was what was just the overwhelming conclusion that I came to. Like, as much as I love St. Benedict um, and and what he did, I think he was his um, work was very specific to a time when this Roman civilization was crumbling. 
And I think there are a lot of parallels between the U.S. and Roman civilization, but they're not, they don't line up exactly. And that's really where Our Lady comes in. And I think even seeing, you know, God always sends the antidote saints to, for the problems that we have in a culture. And, um, you know, our biggest problem as, as a country is really what's happened to women. I mean, this is an unprecedented reality where you have some upwards of um, 3,000 abortions a day, and these children are being killed by their own mothers. Um, so this is a very new reality. You know, anytime you had warfare in the past, it was always perpetrated by men against strangers. And um, so that's not the case anymore. So there's something radically different about the kind of destruction that we're living with. And I think that's why we see this uptick in Marian devotion. We see this uptick in what the popes have said about Our Lady in this last century, because she's really the antidote. So, um, you know, most of the saints that are going to be shine and are going to be, you know, known throughout history... Um, you know, as history progresses through this era, I believe, are really going to be Marian saints, people that have strong devotion to Our Lady, and that she leads them to help restore the culture. Well, we've seen that already with St. Maxim Colby and St. John Paul mm-hmm. II. They have right. very strong yeah. devotion to Mary, to the Blessed right. Mother. How, mm-hmm. can, how can today's woman relate to her? I mean, you know, so many people, I think, oh, she's <laughs> yeah. she's pure, she's yeah. perfect. Well, so how does today's yeah. woman relate to Because her? especially right. when the culture, which you talked about, you know, the culture of death and the culture of mm-hmm. abortion, how can they relate right. to her? Yeah, no, I think that's a, a fantastic question. I think one of the, the key issues that I've really pinpointed is just this huge chasm between what women are told they're supposed to be like in the culture today and who Our Lady is. And I, I think so often she's really portrayed very superficially or in, in very saccharine kinds of ways. And um, so some of her greatest virtues, we just don't we, don't, we don't even know where to start with them because they're not familiar to us at all. You know, even the virtue of meekness. I mean, very probably, you know, fewer than a handful of people in the country could even define that virtue properly. Um, and yet meekness is, is one of the greatest virtues that Jesus and Mary both had. Both had incredible power at their fingertips. Meekness doesn't mean absence of power. You're a doormat. It means you have the capacity to do something, but you rein yourself in so that you know that you're acting in a way that's accord with what, how you want to act instead of just being carried away by your emotions. And um, so, anyway, I think that you know, for my experience was just that I needed to really. I mean, it can, all, all comes through the rosary and through devotion to her that she's takes us under her wing and starts showing us and revealing these things. You know, little lessons and throughout the day or throughout the months um, that you can see, um, see really the progress, where, how she's, you know, carries a soul along. But yeah, I think, um, you know, one of these, these key issues is that we need to start like looking at who she was um, certainly through scripture. I mean, this is one of the things I did within the Marian option was trying to give this big picture of you of how she's worked throughout history and one of the, some of those virtues that she brings, she brings order. I mean, this is one of the things that women love. We yeah, love yes. bringing order to our homes, organizing our closets, you know, all of this kind of thing. That's one of the, the great virtues that Mary always brings with her. You know, it's a true hallmark of who she is. Um, she also, like you guys were saying earlier, she always points us to her son. Mm. Um, but she also brings beauty wherever she goes. And I think that's another area that we can really relate to. Um, and, you know, even if we struggle with those other virtues and we don't, we're not familiar with them yet, um, we can start in these two places where, you know, things that we are already well familiar with. We love um, looking at beautiful art, pictures, jewelry, you know, all of these kinds of things. And it's a very uniquely feminine thing that we have this desire for beauty. And it's not well, and we desire to be beautiful, reason. too. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not for nothing. It's because we are supposed to, we're called to mimic Our Lady, who's every app- apparition ever the the person who saw the apparition said, I just saw the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. That That's two of one. Everybody says that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we are called to mimic her, not in a vain way, but in a way that's truly beautiful because it's a reflection of who God is. I um, think, so I think that's why it's, it's kind of tucked in us. Um, you know, naturally it comes to us. We can distort it, but it's there. I think the other thing, too, along with that, Carrie, is the fact that women who begin to do this, it's kind of counter. It is very countercultural, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like yeah. a dichotomy that the more you embrace these virtues, the more mm-hmm. it's going to help your family, your your relationship yeah. with your husband, the people around mm-hmm. you. I mean, being mm-hmm. meek, whoever thought meekness right. would bring that kind of an influence on the yeah. you know, people around you. Right. And I think that's one of the things that women have gotten so wrong these last 40 years. It's really the sense of how is it that we can be most influential? And I think... You know, we've been told by all of these elite 
feminist women, we have to be we have to be forceful and we have to be ambitious and we have to be outspoken. You know, all those things have a time and a place. But if that's like our main way of operating, um, we're not going to get very far because people are going to turn it tune us out because nobody likes to operate with someone like that. I, I've spent a lot of time looking at um, poetry and song lyrics and and things that men have written, why they like women, what they love about women. And, you know, nagging is never one of those qualities that makes it into these <laughs> lyrics. You know, this angry woman who, who's, who, you know, has to sort of beat everybody down. Nope, not anywhere in the lyrics. So um, that's, I, I think, one of those things, too, that we haven't been mindful at all of what it is that our, our, the men in our life need, what it is that our children need, um, and how it is that as women we can help, um, we, can, we can help them grow and flourish um, instead of listening to what these elite women are telling us we this mold that we have to fit into um, and that, I think that's the real disconnect is where are we getting our information from as far as um, forming our characters is it coming from you know angry raging women um, or is it coming from that still small voice inside of us that says sometimes you just you need to be quiet here or that gives you need to us stick peace. up here yeah that that gives right. us peace Yes, and joy, too. Right. I think that's the other great fruit of it is, you know, let's compare Mother Teresa to a handful of elite women that are in the media daily. And, um, you know, there's a very big difference <laughs> between, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the joy and the peace. Those are the evident fruits that we always can tell that we're on the right path and those things are there. Well, getting back to your book, The Marrying Option and Mary's Influence Throughout All History, one thing that I think that's very interesting that you bring out is that she, her response is not a blanket approach and that she's yeah. suited to specific right. individuals. So how do you see that playing out today in our world here in America with mm-hmm. women specifically? Sure. You know, um, I mean, just the fact that we can even have a discussion about how Our Lady is working with American women in our culture today does point to the nimbleness of, of devotion to Our Lady, that she's not, you know, it's not like we're saying every, all women have to do X and kind of fit yourself into that cookie cutter. But in effect, she's going to call each and every one of us to do something very different based on the, the gifts that we have, based on our experience, based on our families, our vocations, all of those kinds of things. And that's the beauty of when we of the Marian Option. When we are connected to her, she's going to call us out and use all of those things in a way that we never dreamed could be used for good. Um, and so it's, it's, it's hugely exciting because it's, the individual flourishing instead of the individual feeling like they have to fit themselves into a mold. Um, and that's what, what Mary does is, is um, she knows better than we do what God's mission is for us, and she wants to help us reach that. And um, it's it's really exciting when you feel like you, you know you have this potential in your life to do good, you have a desire to do it, and then she helps get you to the point where you're doing it. So um, yeah, I think it's really heartening to see it, look at it in those terms. Well, let's look specifically at the young women today. I know you work mm-hmm. with a lot of different women from all walks of life. What is sure. it that they are turning and look, turning to looking for right now? You know, I think young women are looking for authenticity. Um, I think there also is this great push and, and sense of, I want to do great things. Um, mm-hmm. And that is a beautiful urge, you know, within the, the soul of anyone. Um, but it seems to be really a, a gift that the millennials have. The problem is, of course, is that they don't necessarily, that, you know, there's always this difference between intentions and actions. And they haven't necessarily got the training that they need to be able to make their intentions come, actually happen. Um, so, you know, you hear a lot about people, like um, I was just reading yesterday, millennials will, will take a job at a coffee shop, but they still have this dream that they want to do something else. But this coffee shop job is not actually on the right track to get them to the goal that they want. And so I think that's another really important place where, you know, learning the virtues, getting a job um, when when you're younger and learning all of these kinds of things that you have to do on a practical level to get from point A to point B, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an important piece. And, of course, the spiritual life plays a role in that, too, because God can open and close doors. Um, to help help us have those experiences that we need to fulfill the desires of our heart. Well, Carrie, so do, you, the, do you see them wanting mentors, or are they open to leading? I mean, just generally speaking, I know everybody's you know an individual and have different right. desires, but do you see generally young women wanting or being open to mm-hmm. mentors? I think the mentor question is a huge one. I think if you ask them, um, they might say, 
no, I don't want a mentor, but pra- practically speaking, partially because it sounds very sterile and almost um, like a job. But I think there's a lot of um, of questions. I think there's a lot of emotional needs, and, and someone like a spiritual mentor can help fill those needs because we don't have, um, our families aren't intact anymore. So what they used to be able to go mm-hmm. ask grandma about or go ask a great uncle about, you know, getting wisdom from these other generations just isn't there anymore. And um, so I think that there is a real longing for that, even if we don't always use the same verbiage um, for it. But yeah, I think it's, it's something that's, it's badly needed on, you know, probably in most sectors of the culture because of the fact that we don't have this, this intact family to, mm-hmm. to really right. pass mm-hmm. the wisdom down anymore. Mm-hmm. That's really, that's really a key point in how to create that among these younger women is kind of a, mm-hmm. the, the question. The que- and I know that, right. I think about, you know, Chris and I are, you know, at a certain age and we've gleaned a lot of wisdom. We're but, at a certain age. I yeah, like the way you say yeah, that. Yeah, we're at a certain yeah. age and um, <laughs> age of wisdom. And I think, you mm-hmm. know, there's so much wisdom. It's like the Titus 2, 5 women. And how can that right. be imparted onto younger women? Not necessarily right. that they may get through their families. Yeah. But. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Carrie? And I, I think that that's one thing that older women need to know about themselves. Like a lot of times I'll encounter women, and I know I went through this stage myself where it was like, what do I have to offer them? Like, I don't know what I would have to uh-huh. offer. But you know what? Even if you don't, feel, you have more than you think, A. But B, mm-hmm. it's amazing how far just listening to someone can go. And uh, that's yes, something yes, that you have yes, to have yeah. a lot of wisdom for. Yes. Right. Just letting someone pour their heart out and share their dreams with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, asking the right questions. If you just a- start asking about battery questions where the person feels like, wow, this this wants someone really digging and asking. And mm-hmm. even if, you know, even that kind of a conversation where they're not even providing a lot can just change a life dramatically really on a dime um so i think that's another thing that uh, that those of us who are of a certain age um can really be helpful and not sit back and think oh i don't have anything to offer but but to know that these very simple things um can go a very long way in a young person's life Mm -hmm. well hey carrie i know that you have lots of stories of um you know unknown stories even of how mary's intervened throughout history and Mm -hmm. saved nations and been in war situations but what i'm i'm wondering is how, for you, has the Rosary and mm-hmm. Mary been powerful in your life? Yeah. You know, I think that's um, a, a great question. I think writing this book changed my life dramatically. I mean, I've always had a devotion to Our Lady and to the Rosary. Um, but when I started really looking into the, what she has done geopolitically and all these amazing connections between different battles and countries and time periods, and it all sort of hinging on um, on Our Lady in, in one degree or another, um, I, I think what I, my takeaway was, she's got it. She's in control. I just need to let her do it and get out of the way and stop fretting about mm-hmm. every little thing. And, you know, I, I spent years up nursing my kids, worrying about, I mean, I, I think I thought of probably every possible thing that could happen to my children um, throughout those eight years of nursing or nine years of nursing. And, um, and it, you know, the fact remains that all of that concern has actually just gone away um, because I now know no matter what happens, even, you know, she's, she does things on a huge scale, but she's also interested in the, in the very small details of our lives. You know, so many great stories about um, conversions and, and food appearing and, you know, all these kinds of miraculous things that um, I think we sort of limit her and think, oh, she's, she's not really going to do that for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think in my own life, it's just given me this great confidence in her and, and deepened my friendship with her uh, significantly. And um, and I think that that is, I just have this n- new piece that really came from writing that book. So if no one read it, it still would have been, you know, very fruitful. Successful project. for yeah, you. Yeah. 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 That's how just often it is when, we're, when we're, we're in this work of evangelization. Uh, Carrie, we have like one minute left in, um, mm-hmm. for the show, but could you briefly explain to us your new venture, the Helena Daily, real quickly yeah. to our listeners? I'd love to. No, um it's an online aggregate site, so we take great news stories from all over the, the, the um, Internet. But um, it's really focused on the Catholic woman and, and bo- both theological articles, but we also have some things like gardening and recipes well, and I, I uh, all have kinds to, of things. I have to say, that's where I learned about Joanna Gaines's new chalk paint. And I'm going to go over <laughs> to this. I found a place in town who has it, and I'm going to go check oh, it out this so week. Fun. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, like, no, it's so fun. We're, we're having a blast with it. I think that's one of the parts of women. Catholic women in particular that kind of gets neglected is, you know, we, we spend a lot of time thinking about spiritual things, but then when it, at the end of the day, we still have to do the dishes and feed our families and clothe our the family. And make our homes so beautiful. 
Right. And these are really important things that I, I think we've kind of neglected as Catholic women. So um, we are um, focusing on that. But um, we also want to like narrow that gap between um, the modern woman and um, who our lady is and try and, and help women kind of realize that in their own lives and, um, and understand these virtues better. So we're, we're having a blast. Well, I, I highly recommend it for our listeners. So, Carrie, we're kind of bumping Thank up you. the clock here. We spoke. We were speaking with Carrie Gress. She's the author of The Marrying Option. Carrie, thank you so much for joining us again here on Catholic Women Now, and we will be praying for you and your work. <laughs> thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Bye. God bless. Bye-bye. All right. Well, here at Catholic Women Now, we are grateful for Fred Haas Law Offices. He's an attorney with over 35 years of experience, and he specializes in personal injury. Now, if you ever had a personal injury or know somebody who's gone through that, that is a very sensitive area and topic to talk to. And Mr. Haas is very caring. He's very he's a great listener. So to go to someone like that who has empathy and will look at the case very authentically and be honest with it is, is, is a jewel. And he was lives he works here in Des Moines but he serves clients throughout all of Iowa. It's Fred Haas Law Offices 515-256-6301 or 888-338-6535 fredhaas.com fred double d haas double a dot com. Well, that wraps up another show. Shall we close in prayer? Yeah, we do have the Iowa Catholic Rosary up next, but yeah, let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Mother Mary, we love you, and we love your son Jesus, and we ask that you would come to us. Help us to reclaim our culture and let it start in our own hearts. Help us to turn to your son Jesus and show us the way that you love him so that we may love him better. In your holy son Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thanks again for joining us. And our guest again was Carrie Gress, author of The Marian Option. um, Thank you for your prayers. Please consider supporting our mission with a donation online. Now go do impossible things with God. Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder is underwritten by Fred Haas. Over 30 years helping injured Iowans recover losses from accidents and work-related injuries. Fred Double D, Haas Double A. And Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, a licensed representative of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Iowa. CindySchulte.com. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris McGruder every Thursday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. On the radio voice for Catholic Women Now. 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM, and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app, Iowa Catholic Radio. Radio.